Hi everybody, Kevin Brown. Today I'm going to do a two-tailed hypothesis test. Now what does it mean to have a two-tailed hypothesis test? Well that just simply means that our rejection region doesn't have to be an upper tail, it can be an upper tail or a lower tail. So what that means if we have our normal curve, we have a rejection region here and we have a rejection region here. That is, if a value is enough standard errors this way or this way, we can reject the null hypothesis. So what does this actually mean? Well, let's look at an example. Let's imagine a soda manufacturing plant and their standard, what they claim, the manufacturer's claim, is 12 ounces for every single can, 12 ounces exactly. So they actually want to test this claim. And this would be a two-tailed test because if they're below 12 ounces, then they haven't met their claim. And if they're above 12 ounces, they also haven't met their claim. They claim 12 ounces exactly. So let's imagine that they take a sample of 30 cans and this produces a mean of 11.95 ounces with a population standard deviation of 0.2 ounces. What does this actually mean for us? Well, again, let's think about this in terms of our normal curve. All right, so here we have the normal curve and we have our mean that we want to be at at 12 ounces and we're actually down here at 11.95. The question is, is that far enough away from this original mean to put it into the rejection region where we can reject the null hypothesis. So let's write out our null and alternative hypothesis. Do that down here. And it's actually quite simple in a two-tailed test. Either the mean equals what they claim it equals or it doesn't, right? because if it's, as mentioned, if it's above 12 ounces or if it's below 12 ounces, we can reject the null hypothesis. We're just trying to see, is it different? So let's figure out a z-score first and foremost. So we're going to take our sample mean, 11.95, and we're subtracting that from our actual mean, and that is 12. So that gives us a value of negative 0.05. And then our standard error is going to be 0.2 divided by the square root of 30. And so 0.2 divided by the square root of 30 is 0.036. So negative 0.05 divided by 0.036 actually is a value of negative 1.39. So we can say that this is a negative 1.39 value. And if you were to look at your z-score table, we see that that is the same thing as 0.0823. So very quickly, what does that actually mean? That means from where this is all the way over makes up a little over 8% of the entire distribution. Now, in a two-tailed test, we would actually multiply this since we have two rejection regions. In other words, we can fold this over and it's symmetric. But actually, at this point, we don't even have to do that because 8% is higher than our level of significance, which is going to be 95%. 95% confidence level, 0.05 level of significance. And because 8% is above 0.05, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. Now, you might be a little concerned, though, about this 11.95 value. And if you wanted to improve this a little bit, you could perhaps take a bigger sample size and really explore this more deeply. But based on what you have right here alone, you do not have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. Now, let's change things up just a little bit with this particular scenario. Let's imagine that instead of 11.95, we actually have 11.90 ounces. And so now we see a much larger difference between these two. 
we'll say that the standard deviation is still the same, sample is still the same, but now we see a much larger difference between them. Now what would happen? Well, let's put it into our z-score. So I have 11.9 minus 12, that is equal to negative 0.10, and then our standard error is still 0.036. So negative 0.10 divided by 0.036 is negative 2.78. So again, we go to our z-score table, and we see that the negative 2.78 is 0 0.0027. So that means everything from here over in the distribution only makes up 0.0027%. But we're not done. Recall that we have a second rejection region, so we would actually take this value and multiply it by 2, and that would give us 0 0.00. And 0.0054 in this case is our final p-value, the probability of committing a type 1 error which is rejecting the null hypothesis when in fact it's true. So because this 0.0054 is less than our level of significance which is 0.05, we can reject the null hypothesis and we have enough evidence to say that the cans are not meeting the manufacturer's claim of 12 ounces, and they're actually shy of that particular amount. So again, this has been an example of a two-tailed hypothesis test where we know the population standard deviation. Thanks so much.